on this weird roll of wanting to post or film videos even though I haven't posted in a little bit as of recording this one. So we're just gonna go with it. Today I wanted to do kind of like a wrap up of my semester student teaching in a middle school. As of the week of December 6th, I have one more uh, day to go in, which is this Thursday, and that's it for the semester until spring. So I have this list here of things I wanted to touch on to suggest you do or you keep in mind when you go into some sort of internship or student teaching you may have. The first thing on this list is to take observation notes. At the beginning of the semester, had this little journal. You might see a lot of nursing majors or nurses have these little tiny journals or composition books. I took one of those and I wrote down any notes as I had them. I jotted them down. I would include anything I liked, anything I found interesting, and anything I didn't like. You know, it's just as important to know about things that you wouldn't implement yourself as things you would implement, obviously. The other thing that was great was that my teacher, my mentor teacher, uh, gave me this huge binder which basically explained the backgrounds of each of the students. So if they had IEPs, 504s, behavior plans, that whole binder would explain that. And so I would also suggest kind of generally writing uh, the demographics of your classroom. So gender, race, um, any behavioral modifications that need to be made. It basically provides some context. I might be able to find a sample lesson plan I had to write, and I'll put it up here if I can find it. You should be able to see that there is a section called Knowledge of Students, and it basically asks for, like I said, uh, race, uh, the gender breakdown, and if any students are receiving services. This is off the top of my head, but you should be able to see it. Anyways, my second tip is to take pictures. Again, with most of the stuff on this list, you're going to have to ask permission because you're kind of inserting yourself into this classroom and into this school, and each school and each district really has their own rules for this sort of thing. Okay, I just had a nice big adventure for work that I'm supposed to be doing, so um, I've kind of lost my place. Anyways, take pictures of classroom spaces. So this could be things on the wall. It could be literal classroom spaces so like the library the whole or the small group area um the projector like the laptop stand area taking pictures of the general area helps you also with your observation notes and it helps with context i would also suggest to take pictures of yourself teaching um a lot of districts now are okay with teachers taking photos of their students uh in an educational capacity obviously but as an intern, I wouldn't, wouldn't push it, you know? So take a picture of yourself, um, teaching, and also take pictures of student samples. Again, with confidentiality, cross out names, don't share it around places, but this is just to help you. And it's also good to put in your portfolio if it's something that you taught. Kind of along that vein is keeping extra copies of material or an extra copy of a material that you might have done or you might have observed that day. In my experience, it's nice to have these materials in case you want to use them in the future. And a lot of times teachers have access to materials that you as a student do not. So um, it's just nice to have a copy of them. If you just have the lesson plan, it might be a little hard to decipher what was going on, what actually happened. And again, like I said, taking pictures of your students might be a little bit iffy. So if you can record a video of yourself teaching, but what I have been doing is recording myself talk. So I'm not taking video of it. I'm just recording the audio. And if I can find a bit of the audio that's not like super sensitive, I might put it up here. You're going to write in chapter one of John Fleischman's book, Phineas Gage, a gruesome but true story about brain science. Phineas Gage experiences a traumatic injury that changes his life and the course of scientific research and how the brain functions. Yeah. Did you write all of that? Or yes. Just, okay. just the the paragraph, the blur. Just the green. You're writing this whole thing. Oh. Okay. I wrote it. So, I color coded it for reading. This red part is number one. It's telling you the specific name of the book. It's giving you the author and it's giving you the book title. 
Number two is blue, and it says a strong action verb. So I said experiences, because it's a little more than just says, or tells, or shows. It has a little bit of oomph behind it. Number three, which is green, says list your main idea. And my main idea, what I got out of the book, and what I found to be the most important overall arching theme, is that a traumatic injury that changes his life and the course of scientific research and how the brain functions. So do we all agree that's kind of what chapter one was about? Mm -hmm. It's talking about his injury and it's talking about how Dr. Bigelow kind of came into the scene. But anyway, um, this is nice just to reflect back on. It's another one of those kinds of observational tools because a lot of times something um, your teacher notes might not be something that you would note if you could hear yourself. And it's really hard to reflect as you're teaching on things that you might want to improve or want to do differently, or even good things, right? So recording audio of yourself is really nice for that. Also in my experience, I just found it was a little easier, like the audio format was a little bit easier to deal with, like moving it from your phone onto a computer. This next one is very dependent on, again, your school, your parents, and your teacher. I was personally able to attend an IEP meeting, which I thought was awesome because this was something I had never gotten the chance to do when I interned back in high school. So if you can, try to attend IEP meetings, parent conferences, things like that, because those are really experiences that are purely teacher experiences. You know, like you're not going to really get another career that goes through these specific types of meetings. You would have to ask your teacher in advance though, because from what I am aware of, the teacher has to ask the parent and probably has to clear it with the principal uh, for you to attend, at least for an IEP meeting. My second to last thing is to save a bunch of materials uh, and any feedback and observation forms you might you might have gotten throughout the semester. So any documentation that you receive that has some sort of feedback on it, I would keep because these are the types of things that are gonna help you grow and change as a teacher or as an educator. Um, and obviously saving your own materials is really important because they're things you've created. At this point, you should be creating materials that you can adapt and differentiate into your actual career as a teacher. I currently teach in a 7th grade ELA class. If I ended up teaching in a 6th, 7th, or 8th grade ELA class, I'm sure I can use some of the materials or PowerPoints I've created for those classes because it's a pretty... the content that we've covered is pretty universal. Lastly, use your mentor teacher as a resource. From my experience, mentor teachers really want to talk about themselves uh, and their experience, especially now because I feel like they haven't really had a lot of professional conversations over the past year and a half, two years, because everything's been online. So even meetings, it's just kind of been bleh. So I spent our planning period, or maybe it was lunch, I don't remember, um, with my mentor teacher talking about where she taught, uh, what what's she thought about the school system I was interning in. Um, and that really, I know where I would like to end up. And that really kind of helped solidify it because um, of the experiences that she said she's had. So get your mentor teacher talking. They're the ones in the classroom 365 days a year, it probably feels like. And you don't have to have like a piece of paper with questions on them. I didn't go into that day planning on asking her questions, but it came up and it was pretty natural. And I even wrote down some of her answers in my observation notes because they're things I wanted to remember. And there were some things that I wanted to make sure I didn't do and some things I wanted to make sure I would remember in two years time when I'm teaching. So these were just some of the tips that I had. Uh, let me know if there's anything that you can think of that might be helpful. Um, again, I'm only one semester into this and I haven't even finished. I have Thursday to go. Um, so there's always more that I can learn. And I'm sure if I do this thing again in the semester, make this video again in the next semester, I will have a ton more things to add. These are just what I could think of and things that I thought quickly could be helpful.